A new pilot program to tackle youth crime in Queensland will be launched this week in Townsville. The $73,000 state government funded program is mainly targeted at Indigenous teenagers to educate about the risks of dangerous home driving. Throughout the six-week course, a broad range of speakers, including a police officer, victims of crime, and local football star Ray Thompson, will address the teens. Meanwhile, the Queensland opposition have capped off a four-day summit in Townsville last week, focusing on the state's youth crime crisis. Opposition leader David Crisofulli joins me now. David, thank you so much for your time this morning. So firstly, what was the outcome of the summit in Townsville? Very powerful and good leaders are good listeners and um, I wanted to show people in the north that we're serious about being a government for all of Queensland. Uh, in a couple of months time we'll be spending a similar period in Cairns. Uh, I took the entire team to Mackay not so long ago and people in regional Queensland are going to continue to see this. I want people to understand that Queensland is bigger than just Brisbane and I want people to understand we're listening to the issues that matter to them and strongly the community put forward um, things that matter and one of them is housing. There's no doubt that the ability for people to attract uh, staff, for example, are really struggling because of the government's failure to plan and deliver infrastructure to open up housing opportunities. We heard very strongly about energy and the mixed messages on energy policy. That was a very uh, a big talking point. But the elephant in the room was youth crime and uh, person after person, business after business, group after group continue to say, we live in an amazing part of the state. But unfortunately, the government's decision to water down the Youth Justice Act eight years ago have created a generation of repeat hardcore young offenders who are making living here difficult because of that onslaught. And people know what an incredible livable city it is. They just want their community back and they want to know there's consequences for actions. And we're going to continue to advocate for that strongly. And it was a really great experience to spend five days living and breathing in the north. So there's over a year and a half until the next state election. So what is the LNP doing now to help address this issue that is quite clearly plaguing um, a large parts of the state? Yeah, it's a great question and good oppositions are diligent and uh, continue to shine a torch on things that matter to Queenslanders. Now, for two years, I've been speaking about the fact that breach of bail has to be an offence in the Youth Justice Act. For two years, the government mocked and belittled us on behalf of Queenslanders when we asked it. And the day before the legislation went to Parliament, finally they caved. Now, that's a win for people. That's people power at its best. But that's only one very small part of the equation. And what I'm going to continue to do is focus on our solutions. I hope the government adopt them. If they don't, you can rest assured that'll be the first item of business to address youth crime. About our solutions, and I always put forward ideas. Yes, we criticise where we see things are wrong. We support where we think things are right. But I'll always make sure that we put an alternate view across so that Queenslanders know we don't just mope about things, we want to lead as well. So it's about consequences for action, which restores the right of the victim ahead of the perpetrator. We want to see magistrates and judiciary unshackled and this crazy notion of detention being a last resort as a provision in the Youth Justice Act, well, that's a failure of the state and that has got to be changed. And the other thing is gold standard early intervention. We've got to try and turn kids around before they've got a knife at the door, before they're hanging out of the top of a sunroof, goading police to chase them. That's what a good full suite of measures look like. We'll continue to put the pressure on the government, but rest assured ahead of the election next year, people know where I stand and people know how important this issue is for every single Queenslander, and I intend to address it. So on early intervention, this is perhaps the most complex and layered component with many offenders coming from broken or abusive families. So how is your, how, what is your strategy to tackle this when you talk about early intervention? Yeah, well, we've already written to the Auditor General and uh, we want to know on behalf of Queenslanders how much the government's spending, who's it with, what's the KPIs and what's working and what's not. Now, it's, it's not acceptable just to say we are spending money. It's about outcomes and trying to turn kids around. We've got two problems here. We've got a generation of repeat hardcore young offenders who for eight years have been on the wrong path because of the government's decision to water down the Youth Justice Act. Now, we've got to deal with those. 
and some of them are hardcore criminals. Now, that's one serious issue we've got to take care of. At the other end of the scale is the pipeline coming through. And I want to give kids help and hope and education and employment and aspiration. But we've got to get fair income about acknowledging that child safety needs to be fixed when it comes to interacting. We need to make sure the programs that are there are actually getting in at the grassroots and delivering it. And right now, nobody knows what's working and what's not because the government refuses to plan deliver and then evaluate programs. It's always about the announcement. It's always about the media conference, but no one's actually doing what a minister should do and administering programs, looking at it, getting into the detail, making sure people are held accountable. That's what we intend to do. And we, we sincerely hope the Auditor General shines that light on it to allow us to do it on behalf of Queenslanders. Absolutely. Well, this is certainly an ongoing issue, one that is at the forefront of, of everyone's mind in Queensland. Opposition Leader David Christopher Lee, thank you so much for joining, 